Good evening, everyone. This evening we are going to shed some light on an economic subject. The subject is introduced by Alfred Marshall in 1890, and the title is Three Laws of Demand Determination. According to Alfred Marshall, there are only three things which can determine the surge in demand of your product. If these three things are absent, then the product is not going to be the dancing doll in the market. People are not going to buy it. People are not going to ask for that particular product by name. And the three laws of, deter of demand determination are law number one, price. Price of the product. Number two, income of the consumer. And the third, the taste or the preference of the consumers. He has actually introduced these three laws in 1890. That is about 130 years ago. But still, it looks like he is, even today, he's absolutely right, absolutely on the dot. Even today, if you think hard, you think deep, you're going to find out that he was absolutely right, and he's absolutely right, even in the colloquial time. Even today, if you think hard and fast, then you're going to find out that, yes, price is the most important parameter to determine the demand. Number two, income, and number three, preference. Still, these three laws are the governing laws, are the driving force of demand. So we are going to elaborate one force at a time, one demand determinant at a time. First determinant is the price. What Alfred Marshall means by that, the price, when the price is affordable, that every three or five strata of the society, means the highest strata, middle strata, and the lower strata, lower middle strata, higher middle strata, all five strata of the society or the consumers can afford, then that particular product would be dancing down in the market. Everybody would be buying this by the bucket, by the name. So the price must be always right. We always buy whatever is affordable. When gold was four or five thousand, thousand rupees a ten gram, it was bought by even the mediocre people. But now this gold is above fifty thousand per ten gram. Even rich people, aristocratic people also, very, very conservative in buying the gold. So when the price of any commodity actually touches the astronomical level, the demand actually falls. Demand elasticity is directly involved with the price. Price is low, the demand, the demand is high. And the price is high, the demand is low. So according to Dr. Marshall, demand determination of your product depends upon the price. First and foremost thing is price. So set the price of a product affordable. Or you actually indulge in the kind of product if the price is affordable for every strata of the society. And every strata, according to C.K. Prahlad, even the bottom of the pyramid, middle of the pyramid and the top of the pyramid, consumers are going to consume your product because the price is affordable, very alluring, <clears throat> and as such, your product is going to become the dancing doll or blue-eyed boy in the market. Number two is income. Now, if the people with low income, very low income, they are not going to consume so many things. Say, for example, family of four, and the father, <clears throat> father makes only five to six thousand a month. 
they are not going to have any kind of luxury to buy so many things and the demand will be very low of number of things because they are not affordable but if the person who is making 10000 the family of four he will be little bit to extra big and to be little bit to prodigal and the demand will go bit higher if the same family or average family in the nation makes 20 to 25000 a month and most of the family have two paychecks coming as well as by both are working then they will actually surge the demand of almost every single thing astronomically so income actually is the biggest determinant to surge the demand of the goods and if income is low people are going to survive just on the given goods not to given the goods they're going to be surviving they are not going to include milk or cheese or butter or fruit or any kind of cereal or biscuit this kind of expensive things they are not going to include in their meals so demand of the goods is directly influencing <clears throat> the income of the consumer or the consumer income will influence the demand of the goods point number 3 is the preferences taste of the consumer now if the taste of the consumer is little higher they are going to demand demand every single thing their preference their preference is good in attire so they are going to have 20 25 pairs of clothes if their taste is higher in vehicles so they are going to have four wheeler and two wheeler if their their preference is higher in any kind of luxurious things that they are definitely going to spend money on possessing the luxurious thing now market is full of goods and the goods is goods that you have in the market is not that alluring that attractive does not actually match with the taste of the consumers the consumers are not going to touch those those stuffs so stuffs available in the market must be in commensuration with the taste with the preference of the consumer so if the if the goods are attractive and the absolutely alluring and tantalizing and scintillating then and then the demand of that particular goods will be astronomical but the product is tepid type of product the product does not have any kind of any kind of sheen or any kind of allurement it's a absolutely we can say lackluster product the demand would be also lackluster so these are the most important parameters of demand determination first is the price second is income and third is taste or the preference of the consumer demand is low or demand of high this can be actually determined by these three parameters these three parameters are going to tell us whether the demand is high of the average and all extravagant goods or the demand is low it will be determined by these three parameters thank you very much for listening god bless everyone on this planet see you again next time bye